God's action, not thought. The universe of God's action, not thought. The universe of God's action, not thought. The universe of God's action, not thought. The universe. What's keeping them? <laughs> ah, yes, there they are. <laughs> Hurry, Chinese, we've wasted enough time already. <laughs> we've already delayed this morning. Okay. Good evening, trainees. It's nice to see you. we're all back. Something tells me that tonight is going to be significant. I can sense great breakthroughs in the air. I really can, really. So shall we go for it immediately? And my fellow trainers will hand each of you a mirror. Now. Wonderful process. Wonderful. Make sure you get a mirror. Wonderful. Now, when you have the mirror, I want you to hold it in front of your face. Look straight into it. Keep looking. Concentrate. Pick up every detail. Okay. What do you see? What thoughts are running through your mind? Be honest. What are you looking at? Do you see success? Or do you see failure? Look deep into those eyes and be honest. Do you see the past or do you see the future? Are you fully contented with what you see or do you feel inadequate? Mm. Look again at your face. All your face. Would you like a different face? What does your face reveal about your life right now? Mm. You're not contented, are you? Why not? Is this how it's always going to be? Okay. Relax. Hand your mirrors back to the trainers. Who would care to comment on that process? That was a horrible experience. Hmm. I felt the same. I didn't like that. I never realized how handsome I was. Huh? And how did you feel about it, Paul? I didn't really understand what I was supposed to do, to be honest. Okay, that's honest. What about you, Jeremy? I'm going grey. That woman is making me go grey. Okay. So apart from Mick's flippant answer, none of you really enjoyed that process. But why not? You're only looking at your own image. Jennifer, you said that was a horrible experience. Don't you ever look in the mirror? Yeah, but not like that. It was really eerie. I think it was your voice, all those questions you were asking. Which question? Are you looking at failure? That one. I felt that too. And is that what you're looking at? Failure? Defeat? I think we're all looking at some kind of failure. Speak for yourself. <laughs> so it didn't affect you at all? We're happy looking at your mug. Well, I didn't like what I saw. Why not, Mick? You're a good-looking chap. Would you prefer to be looking into Jeremy's mirror or Paul's? <sighs> Give us a break. That's not what I meant. I know, I know what you meant. None of us would really be here if we liked what we saw. That is why we are here crying out for a breakthrough, so we can look into that mirror and say, this, this is who I am, and I am good. Do you mind me asking you a question? Feel free, I'm at your service. <laughs> No, it's, it's just that you, you always seem so confident in yourself, but, but did you ever not like looking in the mirror? Yeah, you don't think I'm Jeremy, I, I once left my mother's womb just like you. I am flesh and blood and have all the human frailties we all have. I messed my life up so bad once you wouldn't believe it. I couldn't bear to look in the mirror, but I, I was so blessed. I found rhythm and Dr. Ingalls helped me make a breakthrough. And I will be eternally grateful to her for that. Does that answer your question? Yes, I, 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 I hope you didn't think I was being it. <laughs> You've given me great hope. Everybody out there in society is the same. I bet you, when you came in here yesterday and you saw your fellow trainees, you thought they looked as if they hadn't a care in the world. But now, Jeremy, now you know different. Now you know that behind all of these beautiful faces is so much hurt. Isn't it amazing? Absolutely. All you young people, I mean, you, you shut up the world at your feet. It's nothing to do with age, Jeremy. You can hurt a young pup just as much as an old dog. Right. I, I apologize, Anne. I'm sorry. I tend to get carried away. It's fine. After this process, we always find it appropriate to have a buddy session. So if you and your buddy just find a nice, quiet area and basically discuss what this process raised for you. <laughs> Are you married now? Yeah, 15 years. It hasn't worked out. You know, we live, we live separate lives now. Still under the one roof. 
totally separate. Yeah. That's not ideal. Yeah, and she's right. No, not really. She, she just creates an atmosphere. You know, when I bring friends over to do a, a little rehearsal, she slams the door. She's abrupt with my friends. Oh, God. Yeah, she's going to be really horrible. What's her name? Hey. Is there no chance of reconciliation? No. You see, she sees my way of life as bizarre. And she has no interest in the arts or anything like that. Do you like the arts? Do you ever act it? I'd say you'd make a wonderful affiliate. Get thee to a nunnery! Don't make me laugh now from talking about joining a convent. Go away. You don't believe in all that superstition, Sophia. You'd be wasted. I, I mean, you, you, you'll want men in your life. No, no, I won't. So, have you a girlfriend? No, not really. No. What do you mean, no? You have, haven't you? No, no I haven't asked. Well, have you asked any girls out? A couple of times. And? Uh, what do you mean no then? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> well, I would have said yes. You would? Yeah, if you had asked me, I would have said yes. <laughs> so, promise me that the next pretty girl you see, you'll ask her out, won't you? Alright. Alright, what? Alright, I'll ask for out. Alright, keep it for you. You're an obnoxious bitch. Do you know that? You're really just a penny book now and a half penny. Or at least, that's what you think. But I'm as good as you any day, so you don't make me feel small. Oh, and what did you see in the mirror then? Well, I saw a decent person anyway. I could look at myself. I'd say you were looking at someone uncouth, loudmouthed, and vulgar. You're something else you are. Oh, you'd probably like to hit me now. I'd say that's your style. I've seen loads of your type in court. My type? My type? Go on then, tell me what's my type. I don't have to tell you if you don't know yourself. Yeah, you do. You can't show more like that about me. I don't have to do anything. You're sad. Really sad. I tell you, spoiled rotten. You don't like me in the great much, do you? You don't know a thing about me. Not one little thing. No. No, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you know like a bit rough. Because let's face it, you won't meet any real men at those dinner parties or circles of yours. They're fed up of mixing with wimpish aristocratic types. <laughs> Hey, Dr. Julia, I had a breakthrough. Curvy Carla really fancies me. She loves every bone in me working class body. I want to shout it from the rooftops. Yippee! You make me sick. Crestfallen 
Yep. You don't turn back. Why don't you turn back, Paul? I would, just wouldn't. Anybody help, Paul? Why won't you turn back? For fear of rejection, that you might believe them. Good, good. Fear of rejection. Would that be accurate, Paul? You'd fear that the beautiful girl would reject you. <laughs> now ask Penelope to be rejection. <laughs> She mightn't be interested in like me. She might not like your looks. She might be interested in your appearance. Is that a pop pearl? You think appearance? I don't know. <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> appearance. <laughs> what else is stopping you, Paul? Uh, she, be afraid to laugh at me. Laugh at you? Okay. Fear of duration. You see. You scare me. We have duration. Hold the collar in his chest. Thanks, <laughs> Lena. Duration. <laughs> <laughs> what else is stopping Paul? She might think he was a weirdo. I know I wouldn't like a stranger bothering me if I was sunbathing. Well, fear of anyone will bother you. Okay, fear of being misunderstood. Completely <laughs> misunderstood and carefully. Oh, Paul come Paul's back. He, he, he does it. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Ride him, cowboy. Okay, I asked what Paul go over and say hello. Um, the fear of not knowing what to say, being tongue tied. Very real fear, Jennifer. Can you hold on to Paul's arm? What else is stopping Paul? <laughs> you might be afraid she already has a boyfriend. <laughs> good, good. Paul might be afraid of the competition. Will you hold his paws with your arm? This competition, Okay. So now, Paul, you have all these impediments weighing you down. Will each of you shout out your name? Shout out what you are. Penelope! Rejection! Pearl! Appearance! Jeremy! Derision! Mick! Misunderstood! Jennifer! Tone time! Carla! Competition! And get a chant going! Rejection! Appearance! Derision! Misunderstood! Tone time! Competition! And louder! Rejection! I placed my hand 
on her little chest and I felt her heart beat. And I think I realised for the first time that I was the one who gave her this life. And I couldn't stop the floods of tears. And I don't think that it counts as a breakthrough, but I think it is anyway. Don't worry, Jennifer. It's a breakthrough for you. You're doing brilliantly. It's a ch yes. 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 You see, Kira's father, um, he's a heroin addict. Um, Pro, could I get a glass of wine? Oh, you don't? Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Oh, no. I think a break too deserves a drink. Okay. Um, See, the day Kier was born, um, he was strung out in the park with his junkie pals. And when he came to visit me in the hospital, he didn't even take up his own child in his arms. Oh, how <laughs> His own little girl. <laughs> he came looking for me for money. I haven't seen or heard from him since. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I realised for the first time that... I'm not going to let anyone talk me down like that again, ever. Yeah. It's now me and Kira, and that's all that matters to me. Yes! <laughs> okay, brilliant, Jennifer. As a trainer, these are always the special moments to witness the joy of somebody's breakthrough. With all due respect, I'm glad that Jennifer feels better. But I can't really see how she's experienced a breakthrough. As far as I can see, she's now on her own. She has to bring up a child in a flat. I don't know how big the flat is. She won't have any financial support. I mean, if that's a breakthrough, I hope that mine is more significant. It's a horrible thing to say. No, I, I agree. I actually found Jennifer's story very moving. You've been watching too many soaps. No, no, no. I, I was most impressed. <laughs> most impressed by the way Jennifer delivered her breakthrough. Now, if you ever wanted to join our drama group, you would make a wonderful Cordelia in King Lear. Um, thank you. Congratulations, Jennifer. You <laughs> have made a great beginning here tonight. And for the rest of your life, you will be able to stand on your own integrity. And Kira, Kira will be a lucky child. Maybe Jennifer's breakthrough will open the floodgates. It often happens like that. Now, our next process is called the games people play. We will play two games, pass the book and pass the message. So let's clear that seat over and we'll get in a long line across the room. Okay. Jeremy, Lorraine, Nick, and Paul. Okay, now, Paul, I want you to take the book off and write things. That's it. In between your knees. Come on, Paul. <laughs> That's it. Now, swivel around and pass it to Mick. Mick, if you could just pass it back to me. Yes, thank you, because we haven't started yet. <laughs> okay, so the book is going to go all the way up to Carla and all the way back to Paul. Now, it's a race against the clock. The record to beat is 12 seconds from the last chorus, okay? So, Freddy Paul, on the whistle, yes? Okay, go! Come on, they're ready, and to Jeremy. So, 12 seconds, remember, we want to get them. Hurry it up. Let's see if you can do it. I'm doing my best. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Good. Wonderful. Come on, turn, 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 turn. Very fast, Freddy. Good. Did we get it? Sorry, Chinese. No new records. <laughs> Here, we, we could have done it, but we have another go. Use that as a practice one. Yeah. Remember, it was only a game. Let it go. Move on. <laughs> Our next process is called Pass the Message. Okay, Carla, I want you to think of a message. Any message at all, okay? And then you pass it on to Jennifer, who will whisper it to Jeremy all the way up until it reaches Paul. Okay, Carla, have you got your message? Yeah. Off you go. I love this one. Absolutely, Brenda is so excited. Be careful, listen, Fair Kevin. We want the message to change. Will it be the same? Okay, Paul, what message did you receive? I don't really want to say this. For God's sake, prove my point, doesn't it? What message did you receive, Paul? Right. 
Es man jāsāt pauši pirmajā jau būtu. Jā, es jāpēc. Tāds tev tu nesīgs, tas tev tāpēc sēd! Es vēl jūs pārši tev. It's so unladylike. I didn't say that. I don't use crude language like that. What message did you send, Carla? Um, Carla said to me that if men have brains, they'd be dangerous. Was that your message, Carla? Yes. Yeah, in fairness, it was provocative. Okay, Trady, so the message was changed. And that, ladies, is just another example of the games people play. <laughs> we are interdependent, but people can always let you them. That is why we must be happy with our own resources. Okay. I think now is a very good time for our buddy time, so use this time constructively. I am sure you have loads to discuss. Okay, off you go. Just find me, chairs. No, honestly, I, I couldn't stop and say that. Yes, you could. Look at what you did earlier. You conquered all your fears. How much? We'll see. You can, I promise. So, do you, do you think you're close to breaking? Uh, I don't know. I don't think I'll ever get there. Why did you come on a course like this? Let me ask it. I mean, you're so young. You know, there's, there's some excuse for all of our lives being messed up with you. You can escape, I can't. It's not, it's not sickness, is it? <clears throat> I mean, you haven't... No, like... not sickness. <laughs> no, just sick. Do you want to tell me? Go on, I, I won't read a word of it to anyone. Come on, come on. You're all buddy, what? No, I'm sorry, I can't. Do you have many friends? That's none of your business. We're supposed to be discussing the rhythm processes. That's what I'm discussing. Do you not want any friends? I'm not short of friends. How dare you? They all have to be masochist then, yeah. And what would you know about friendship? Do you know what you need? I know what your problem is. I'd say that book was the hardest thing you've had between your legs in ages. <laughs> on the big one, the process to beat all processes, the cornerstone of our three days together. But first, let's prepare. Everybody relax, just relax. Just relax there, loosen up, and close your eyes. Now, I want you to prepare yourself to your beach again, your own special beach. You are out swimming. The water is warm. The sun is beating down on the glistening sea. You lie your head back in the water, kick out your legs, and float there effortlessly. You are in total unison with nature. You feel a gentle swell as the waves roll in. This is the rhythm of creation, the heartbeat of nature. <laughs> you could stay here for eternity, but you don't. You jump up, you dive into the water, and you swim back to the shore. You walk towards your towel, lie down and close your eyes, all the while feeling enveloped in goodness. Now. Keep your eyes closed and listen to this music. Now, open your eyes. Feeling good? That's amazing. Your voice is so soothing. Thank you, Jennifer. But it is your own inner voice that is important. You know, like that, and I can't swim. It's <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Can you not swim, Paul? No, not a stroke. I nearly drowned in an once when I was young. But in that last exercise, when I asked you to swim back to the shore, how did you do it? I really swam. I mean, I'd never thought about not being able to swim until now. Yeah, give us a urine sample, quick. <laughs> no, seriously, this is worth examining for us all. My voice can be replaced by your own inner voice at any time. If your own inner voice keeps telling you you can, you can, you can, then you can harness a power much more powerful than me. Others can supply the support too. Make your friends strive for the things they really want to achieve. I'd like to offer my services to Paul to teach him how to swim. Would you really? Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's the spirit, Jeremy. The world can work for us all. Doctor, I'm uh, sorry for, for interrupting again, but I just have to say what I have to say now or I'm going to burst. <laughs> I have a breakthrough. Come on. <laughs> you know something, Jeremy? I can say 
and you share your breakthrough with us. Uh, well, Dr. Julie, I just realized over the past couple of evenings that I'm all right. You know, I'm a good man, and, I, and I've been terrorized for the past 10 years. Now, she can rant and rave all she likes, won't bother me, it'll just run off me like water off a duck's back. So, let it be known right here, right now, Jeremy Osgood is all right. Je Jeremy Osgood is good. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeremy Osgood is not taking any more abuse, and, and you know something else? Jeremy Osgood may even ask she who has to be obeyed for a divorce. Yeah, we'll see how she likes that. Again, with respect. How do we know what you're like to live with? You would be a lunatic for all we know. You've only got his side of the story. God, you really take the biscuit, don't you? First you objected to her, aren't you? Now his. What's your problem? I haven't got any problem. I'm just exercising caution. I'd like to hear his wife's side of the story. Well, she didn't tire of bleeding money, did she? He did, so that's all we have to go by. Maybe he kind of upset because she's not having a break through. Shut up, you imbecile! Now, <laughs> trainees, we can all break through. <laughs> I just want to say one more thing. I am easy to live with, okay? I am. I have an artistic temperament. So. We understand, Jeremy, and we are all overjoyed. Let's give Jeremy another round of applause. <laughs> now, things are looking good for this course. Tonight, I have a little mission for you. A little bit of homework to put your thinking caps on. When you get home this evening, I want you to write down three things you've always wanted to do in your life, but haven't got around to doing yet. Any three little ambitions still not yet achieved. Can you do that for me? Good. Could they be anything? Anything at all that's important to you. Three little aspirations still unfulfilled. Now, trainees, place your chairs in a line, every second person facing forward. Hurry now. <laughs> Quickly, trainees! It's a line! It's come on! It's a line! Straight! Hold them in with that. You may leave and we'll see you right and early tomorrow evening. Let's begin. Okay, Carla. What do you want? What do I really want? What do you want? I want happiness. Nonsense. What do you want? I just want to be happy. What do you want? I want to be able to lead my own life. Nonsense. What do you want? It's the truth. That's all I want. What do you want? I told you. I want my freedom. Nonsense. What do you want? I don't want anything. Just leave me alone. You don't want anything. Right, you can go outside now. Nonsense, what do you want? I want to be safe. Nonsense, what do you want? I've answered your honesty. Nonsense, Lorraine, what do you want? Please, leave me alone. Lorraine, what do you want? I don't want anything. Yes, Lorraine, tell me that again. What do you want? I don't want anything. Wonderful, Lorraine, you can go outside now. I told you 20 times already. Have you a hearing problem? Well, Mick, tell me, what do you want? Are you sure you didn't work in the Gestapo? I just want an easy life. Mick, tell me, what do you want? Oh, I just want people to get off my back. Nonsense, Mick, tell me, what do you want? All right, then. One of my mad, passionate love to you. There, are you happy? <laughs> what do you want? Oh, I just want an easy life. Like, I want peace and quiet. Daddy, could you just take over here? Oh, look at the Colin reinforcements. <laughs> Okay, Mick, what do you want? I want about 20 points of Guinness after this. What do you want? <laughs> I just want to be on a desert island. What fucking answer do you want? What do you want? What do you want? I don't want anything. I can cope. Exactly, Jennifer. You really understand. You see, nothing is right or wrong. It just is. But I didn't have to tell you that. Am I right? I hope so. Relinquish the hair to be yesterday. Today, hope is mine. You can take a break now, guys. Well, Paul, what do you want? I don't want it, bro. Good boy, you don't want anything. You can go inside now. Wait, you want to anything? Yes, Paul, you're finished. Well, I'm serious, I don't want anything. I know that. Should I have wanted something? No, Paul, you're finished. You can go inside now. <laughs> what do you want, Mick? I like to yesterday. Well, I've changed my mind now. Don't give me any of that nonsense, Mick. What do you want? I just want you to get the fuck out of my life. What answer do you want? What do you want, Mick? None! Oh, I knew you were You don't want anything. 